Hi, James Whiffen here for Tuts Plus. And today we'll be creating this laser beam effect here, uh, as seen from that movie with the cartoon rabbit. So this is the footage that we'll be working with, and you'll see that we have um, a sort of prop laser beam, and uh, that was just uh, projected using a uh, LED light that I bought off the internet. Um, it's meant to, you're meant to attach it to your bike, and it's sort of draws out this little cone of where your uh, bike is. I think it's some sort of safety light. Uh, that was about 20 bucks on the internet. And what that allows us to do is uh, it gives us a matte line, uh, which will really help us uh, when we're doing the roto for this, um, because without that uh, sort of guide, you'd have to be pretty skilled at rotomation to be able to get uh, such a good result. But uh, let's begin by match moving this in PF track. Um, you could actually do this effect without match moving anything, but uh, match moving will help uh, the roto process. Okay, in PF track, I've just uh, created a new project and imported the footage. What you want to do is right click on that and add in an auto track node, and that's what we have here. And we can see that uh, besides the camera, the only thing in the scene that is moving is the hand here. And what we want to do is um, you can either uh, just track with normal settings and then go back and delete all the points that uh, get uh, tracked on the hand. But what I'd rather do is set the settings, the tracking settings high enough so that PF track will know that any trackers on the hand are inaccurate and automatically discard it. So that saves us uh, creating a garbage mat around the arm, oh, sorry, the hand. So you'll see what I mean in a second if we uh, just say bump up the number of trackers, 300 candidates, 150 targets, and a window size of 50. That's actually overkill, but my computer's pretty fast, so I don't mind. Um, we also need to go better accuracy. This will uh, give us a really good track and uh, save us some time. So uh, we can hit auto track and holding down shift, and that will track it in the background and you'll see a little status bar up here, um, which is like the progress. And uh, what we want to do is grab that footage again and create a new node here. We want to right click and add an undistort node. And here we can analyze our footage by drawing lines on things that are meant to be straight that aren't due to barrel distortion. Um, but I already know the specs for uh, this particular lens because I use it all the time. So I'm just going to plug in the values here. I just have like a, a notepad document with the settings. So we're using a wide angle lens here. So these are the values that we need to uh, type in. So I'll just drag that off screen. And uh, we need to measure high order distortion. And the low order part is 0 0.327840. And that uh, takes care of most of the things. And to refine it, we have the high order distortion of negative 0.06. And there we have it. What we want to do now is export this footage. So I'm just adding an export node. And what we can do is go to clip export because we want to export this undistorted footage here. And uh, the settings for that, this is where you type the name and the format. We just double click here and choose the format. I've already exported this, so I won't worry. But when you're ready, just hit export and it will export this uh, undistorted footage. Now let's come back to our auto track and let's examine our track. And we can see that because we had such good settings, PF track has completely ignored the hand and not put any trackers there. What we do need to do though is go through and delete uh, any points that are sort of fake points like this one here. Um, that's not really a place in 3D space, it's just sort of a crossroads. So let's grab the marquee here and just delete points such as this. All right, that's all the bad points gone. So uh, let's grab this undistort node, just copy it, paste it in here, and drag our auto track plug that into the understort. Now we want to right click on our understort node and add in a camera solver. And if it's off screen, well, I assume you're not working on a screen this small, but if it is, you just come to the create palette and then add in the camera solver node and then bring that down here and plug the understort into camera solver. Uh, as you can see, my, my interface keeps changing and that's just because PF track is really buggy uh, on such a low resolution as this. 
So just bear with me while I reset my interface. There we go. And uh, what we want to do is solve all. Okay, here's the result that we have. And we can see that the focal length is around 10, which I know is pretty darn good or pretty close to what we want. Let's go to the errors and uh, fit the view here and maybe span this up. Okay, so we can see we don't have much error, but I would like to trim that down a little bit and then refine that. And uh, if we zoom in here, these trackers will scale down a little bit. So the orientation of the scene isn't quite right. And what we want to do is maybe grab one of these nice points here and set that as the origin. Then let's add in an orient scene node so that we can more accurately see what's going on here. What we might want to do is just go into two views here and zoom out, maybe spin around and just see, yes, we have a very nicely defined ground plane. We have the box and we have the wall. So what we want to do is just orient the scene a bit better. Uh, let's grab all the points that belong on this plane and create a, a ground plane out of that. So let's go marquee and to lasso marquee, you just hold down alt and select what you want. So these points here and something like this. So these points and we can set that to XC. Now what we might want to do is grab the rotate tool and hold down control just to make it uh, more refined and sort of rotate this to more accurately uh, resemble the scene. Scale it up as well. And of course we should watch it. So if we cache this, we should be able to play it a bit quicker. Here we go, all cached and playing in real time. Well, nearly real time. Um, this looks very good, very stable. So what we want to do now is just export the camera to Nuke. We can do that by adding in the export node. We want the Nuke Python script. The scene scale of one should do us and let's export that. Excellent, so now let's jump into Nuke and composite this. Okay, and Nuke, let's hit R to read our footage. And we want the undistorted footage. And let's hook this up to the viewer here. And we notice that um, the resolution is a, sort of a non-standard format. So let's just hit S and uh, set our project to be that funny format there, which is the e uh, undistorted 1080 footage. And uh, what we can do here is scrub through and find the point. Uh, you'll notice that we have places where uh, the laser beam sort of doesn't uh, show because the hand's in the way. And uh, that shouldn't really be the case if, um, you know, if the dude was putting his hand through a real laser wall, uh, it wouldn't be blocked off there. So our first step is to repair this line here and um, extend it so that it's complete throughout the whole footage. So let's hit R again and go up one level. And under the assets, uh, we have this dotted line, which I just created in After Effects. And if we view this, um, it's just a dotted line. And uh, the reason I created it like this is because the laser is actually made up of lots of little dots. It's a little bit hard to see um, on this sort of footage, but it's actually just a series of dots as opposed to a perfect line. So sort of the dots are close enough together to create the illusion of a line. Uh, so what we want to do is also read in the camera. So I'm going to hit Alt X and um, navigate to where we need to be and just load in the Python script that we exported from uh, PFTrack. And here we have all our nodes. So let's just examine what we have here. We have the scene node, the features, the render and the camera. So all good. Let's grab these and bring them over here. I'll just expand this for the moment. And I also just have uh, a roto asset there that we'll be using that later. So what we want to do is plug this dotted line into a card. So just added a normal card. 
and we want to plug this card into the scene node. Now let's uh, view this render by hitting it by pressing one and we can see that we have our points and we have our uh, dotted line and let's just feed this into the background. Okay, so the dotted line sort of isn't where it ought to be. So let's move the card node. I'm just going to go into the 3D view and see what's going on here. You can see there's the camera. And let's rotate this minus 90 in Y. and then move it to where it ought to be. Somewhere around here, um, it needs to be a lot fatter. So let's just scale it up. And it's okay if we go too far, we'll be matting that. Okay, something like that is good. Now let's just check throughout the footage and see. It doesn't quite line up. Uh, so we might want to rotate it a tiny little bit. Minus 91. Then move that. Cool. All right, so it actually doesn't really need to be here at the start because um, if we just disable this card, you can see that we actually have the line, but that's fine. We can map that. Uh, but because we drew it so big, uh, I'm pretty sure it'll cover all the places that we need it to be. Excellent. So what we want to do now is uh, composite this. So here we have the render node here. We can go M to get in a merge. And uh, we can put that over the footage. So A over B, and then we can view this. And uh, what we can do is maybe set this merge operation to be plus. And we can disable that there. Also, we're currently viewing or getting all these features so we can disable those and what we might want to do is blur this here. Blur it maybe three and let's in a grade node, G to grade, gain it up some and Let's go to this card node, maybe make it scale of two. And let's just take this again to the extreme. Let's make it very bright and maybe Again, it's too big at the moment. So come back to the card, the scale on the Y to be maybe 0 0.5, 0 0.3, something quite thin. And uh, we can see that it's much more saturated than the original. So let's add in a hue shift. And overall saturation, let's go 0 0.5 and then Let's take the rotation maybe um, minus 20 a little bit. We want to sort of get more of the pink. Let's go maybe minus 15. Uh, and we could see that we're not really getting all of this uh, fine detail. So a way we could probably get some of that is by multiplying this by the grain card or the grain of this uh, camera that we're using. 
first I'll just blur this a little bit more. 